Um, I don't know if I'm getting through it. I think I'm existing. I think they wake up every morning and I look out and the sun's up and people are going on with their life and they feel like my whole world has stopped. And I just don't understand how someone could be wiped out of your life, but everything goes on. So the mornings are always the hardest. And well, it's unexpected, so so it's, it's understandable how you be shaking and, and feel like that, you know, because it's just nobody expected that. And you came home and you go, you go out, you go back to that that night. I'm sure it's, it's a hard thing to think of. And you still have to deal with all the the stuff that's come out, you know, like the, the trying to figure out what, what's going on. And, we talked about it earlier about this, this police report coming out and, and, uh, and it, I guess they were just trying to be real thorough with you guys. What do, what do you know about the police report? Um, I haven't seen it. I just know when everybody was here and I want to you know, give the credit, except for the 911 caller guy that helped me, the police were very, very sensitive to our needs. The, um, OMI department was sensitive to our needs, and, and so was the um, ambulance and the paramedics, and they were all really great, and I mean, I know that they handled it in a respectful manner. Um, as far as the police report, I guess it was on TV yesterday, and I don't remember anything that was in it, because it, it was like, when it happened, it was such a traumatic experience that I don't even know. I mean, I was asked so many questions. I, I don't remember. I mean, the number one question was, you know, was he doing drugs? That's the number one question in everyone's mind. I hadn't seen him. Did I see him do drugs? No, I didn't. Has he abused him in the past? Yes, he did. That's all public record. Was he doing them? I don't know. I, I, I couldn't, I mean, I'm not going to, I, could he have? Yes. Could he have not have? No, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is. I just, I just know that. I didn't see any signs as far as there was never any drugs around the, you know the last few days of his life he was there wasn't even anything wrong with him except for the day when um, we left he just said he was tired and he wanted to rest and that was the normal see for us if he wanted to rest we would um we would take the kids I would you know and Pam and I would take the kids and We'd go take them to Peter Piper's or to a movie and let Johnny rest and we'd come home and then it was family time. He knew that we I'd get them out of his hair, but when we came back we expected him to be a dad and go with us and we'd do go on the rest of our day. So it was and it wasn't, you know, when I when I left I checked on him. It may sound funny because he's an adult and I'm checking on him, but but it was just, you know, something that I always did with Johnny and um you know, the last words he said was I love you and um, I'm tired and close my door <laughs> those were the last words because I snuck in his room and he was already curled up in bed and he's like and um and I said okay but you're getting out of this room later and he's like yeah yeah you know but close the door close the door and that was it I, I left and I took the kids to a movie and I came home and um it I just was I was at the movies and I just felt something. I didn't know and I, I can't explain what it was, but I felt really uncomfortable. I was sitting in the movie and I kept checking my phone because he wasn't calling me. And Johnny, whether he's been rest or not, he blows up my phone and you ask anyone that knows us, every five minutes he's calling me just to say, oh, I, I fed the dog, I hit my toe, I'm taking a shower. I mean, he had to report in constantly. And he would yell at me if I didn't have my phone on. So I had my phone there and I kept checking in and at one point, I got up, I, I went out of the theater, I called his dad and I, you know, to come and check on Johnny. The dad didn't answer. I, I tried one more time and I said, well, maybe it's just me and it's my imagination. And so I, I, I go back in the theater and I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I couldn't even tell you what the movie was about. I just was just nervous. And we leave the theater and um, well, the kids were playing a game and... They, you know, I was just real anxious, like, let's go home, let's go home. And we get in the car, and my youngest said, can I get something to eat? We went through a drive I didn't want to stop anywhere. I just wanted to get home. We went through a quick drive-thru, and um, 
we, we grab his food and we come home and I just had this awful feeling and my sister kept asking me what's wrong what's wrong I was like I don't know I don't know I, mean, I didn't know I just I came home and I um everyone was downstairs and my kids had just got a lizard because my my son's birthday was the day before like the 26th and um we had um they had they got him a um, an iguana and they got my other son a turtle and so they were upstairs in the room putting all their little aquariums and everything and I looked down the hall at Johnny's room the door was still closed just like I left it but it was yeah! it was empty I don't I can't explain the feeling it just felt empty and I went and I stood by his door and I put my ear by it and it was quiet and Johnny always had music or TV or something on and so I got nervous and I started pacing back and forth but I was scared to go in there it was so I don't know why I couldn't tell you like it was just a I opened the door and he had his light off so I couldn't put the switch on because he had it off in the van and I opened it and I looked and the bed was empty so I was like oh I was I was relieved I was like oh god okay I overreacted he's I thought he was around the neighbors somewhere harassing somebody or even playing basketball because he used to go down right to play basketball that was his thing and I thought maybe that explained why I didn't call you know and but I was I was gonna step out I got this nagging feeling again like gotta turn on the other light and open the door wider so I because then when you first open the door it opened a little bit you could see the bed but you can see the floor so again that feeling hit me so I went to the hallway and I turned on the light and I opened the door and I um I looked down and um you need to get me him. No, oh, I want you to come out of the room. I don't want him to. I don't want him to hear this one. Um I, I I look down and I see him laying face down and my heart dropped because I was like, Oh my god, oh my god, what's he doing on the floor? You know, and so I knelt next to him and I shook him and there's no reaction, and I shake him again, and there's no reaction, I'm like, come on, Johnny, don't, don't, don't do this, Johnny, come on, what, what are you doing, oh, come on, that, that's enough, let's get up now, and and I shake him again, and, and I don't know what to do, I'm just like, I'm looking at him, and, and he just looked like he was sleeping, so I was like, come on, Johnny, just wake up, wake, wake him up, we were home now, get up, you know, and nothing, there was no movement, and I was like, and I kind of knew because I went to his face and I look and there's, his eyes are closed and I'm like, oh, you know, please, Johnny, get up, please don't do this to me and, and he's just like, he doesn't answer me so I touch his leg again and I feel on his, um, his calf area and it feels hard but he's warm so I'm like, well, maybe I'm just overreacting, and there's nothing wrong with him, you know, and, and, and I didn't know what to think, so I, my heart just, I just didn't know what to think, so I go downstairs, and my sister's down there, and I'm like, can you come here, please, and she's like, what do I, I don't know, like, Johnny's, he's something, you know, there's, it's, something's happening, there's, I don't know, and she's trying to get it out of me, and I'm like, just go check on him and make him wake up, and she's like, he's asleep, I'm like, can we get him up for me? Please wake him up. So she comes running and she comes out of the room and she's like, oh my God. I'm like, don't, just don't tell me that. Just go in there and you wake him up. That's all I want from you. Don't tell me. Just wake him up. And she's like, go call 911. I'm like, but, but, but just get him awake. And, and she's like, you need to call 911. And then I just walking to get the phone and I see my kids and I'm like oh my god I can't so I r my instinct was to run downstairs and I get him and I tell her get the kids out of here get the kids out of here and she's like what's going on I'm like just please get the kids out of here so she leaves and I get on the phone and I'm like you need to come now and I don't know who was on the other end but if someone's ever in this situation you need to be more compassionate you, you need to you need to tell people that help her on the way and stop trying to interrogate them I mean I understand they're doing their job but I was never told help was on the way all I was told was you do this and you do that and you need to calm down how do you calm down when you see your husband laying on the floor and he's not moving and, and I'm trying to explain it to them and, and I didn't know what to do so so I ran back upstairs and I put the phone on, on speaker and I throw it to my sister and he's still not moving and I'm like oh god he should have been up by now so I run back downstairs and I get my cell phone and, and I'm like 
first thought in my head, um, Tom, he lives down the road. He was a medic in the army. He could help us. So I call him and I'm like, get here, get here. And he's like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Johnny's not moving. I need you to wake him up. And he's like, what's happening? I'm like, I don't know. I need him to be woken up. Wake him up for me. That's all I want is for somebody to wake my husband up. I don't want, I don't know. Just come. And, and he's like, well, where are you? I said, at home. He's like, what's your address? I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, you know, what, what do you mean? And he's like, calm down. I'm like, I can't calm down. Just wake him up. And, and then, like I said, he, he, I don't even know if I hung up with him. I, then I remember running outside because I was like, I don't have an address on my house. The paramedics are going to miss it. And my husband's not going to get the help he needs. So I'm running outside and I'm up and down the sidewalk. And I finally see the paramedics and I run him in. I'm like, just as he's upstairs. And they're like, you know what room I'm like just get him up just get him up I don't even think I told him what room I was just he's upstairs just wake him up he's the one sleeping and after that it all became I just remember them coming downstairs and and you know they're like I'm sorry ma'am I'm like no you don't tell me sorry you go up there and you wake him up and they're like ma'am I'm sorry and I'm sitting there like no I don't want to hear sorry I want you to wake him up they're like it's too late it's you know, it's like you don't get it. This is Johnny we're talking about. He has survived everything that life has thrown at him. You can't tell me it's too late. And they said there was nothing they could do. And they start explaining in their terms about bleeding out. And I'm like, no, you need to wake him up. And, the, and, and after that, I don't really remember much of anything. I just know that I just became like this weird, I don't know. I just don't have any answers um and and I feel that you know our anguish is is constantly put out there you know the 911 call was put out there and I thought that was tasteless that was our pain that was you know it it hurt me to just I just don't understand why that had to be put out there and I don't understand why everybody's so worried about his autopsy the guy is gone and that's all that matters is that I don't have a husband. My kids don't have a dad. He's never going to be called uncle, trainer, dad, husband, nothing. They'll never be anything but, you know, and then to take matters worse or make them worse, it's like they disgrace them. And they're like, oh, well, he was a drug addict. Oh, but he was a fighter. But he was a drug addict. Who cares what he did for this state? That guy brought millions of dollars in revenue to this state. And not once when he was being bashed by everybody that mattered in this state, not once did he give up on Albuquerque. Every interview he gave, every, he tattooed it on his body because he was proud to be from Albuquerque. And he would tell everyone, you know, I tell Johnny, you know what, you know, they're just always picking on you. Let's just go. And he's like, no, I was born and raised here. I'll live and die here. This is my town. This is my tierra. That's what he would say. And I would tell him, oh, Johnny, you know. But he never once gave up on the state, even though they seem to have forgotten that little detail. And the media, like I said, you know, I think it's great you want to honor Johnny. It, it, great, but honor him. Don't rip him apart. Honor him. He never ripped anyone apart. You never heard Johnny say a bad thing about New Mexico or Albuquerque. You never heard him say anything bad. If you came to him and said, oh, that guy over there is bad. He, he did time for this. Even Johnny would say, you know what? There's only one person that could judge me. And I don't fear anybody here. People will talk about me. But you know what? I have one judge, and there's only one judge I have to be right with, and that's God. If anyone else don't like me, he's all, you know what I do for them? I pray for them. He's all, and they hate that, but that's all right. I'll pray for them. And he did. He didn't, he wasn't perfect, but who is? You know, did we have our ups and downs? Yes. You know, was he a uh, handful? Yes. You know, but at the same time, if you ask me, was he good? Yes. You know, did the good outweigh the bad? Yes. Did he... You know, everything that he gave back, he gave back. If, if Johnny did something for someone, it was above and beyond what anybody could ever expect of him. And it just hurts me as a New Mexican, as, as just, I just want him to be honored. I don't want him to be trash talked anymore. Who cares if there was this or that or he had been in trouble? So what? The trouble. He always overcame the trouble. Because um, last time I used to go to German, because I used to go, and um, my dad used to teach me how to box, uh -huh. and then I got tired. Mr. Dadman? Yes. Talk about that. 
it's just hard knowing that he's gone and like a lot of people will miss him and it's just really hard. Don't you want to not box anymore? Kind of like because he was my, no one could push me to where I was and like I freak out, I need him, I need his voice, I need his presence, I need him to tell me what to do. And he's not, I can't hear those words no more. They're always in here, but like, the person, I need, need him. I need that touch, I need that, I mean, I just I don't have it no more. No one got me to my best like he did. You're trying to, now you're trying to be here for him, as yeah. far as being like the man around here. Right? Kind of like how whatever he would want me to be, I just, I don't know what he would. Trying to figure it out, still to myself what he'd want right now.